Hi everyone, I just wanted to take a quick video to uh, clarify a few queries that I've been having. So one of them is about the uh, Java reverse code option. So I've got a reverse code option here which uh, lets me generate a UML from a code. So uh, let me go into tu tutorials and here I've got the model, the vehicle, car and bicycle uh, code that I generated in the uh, previous star UML session. So let me just select this folder and I've got my Java reverse here which has three classes but as you can see there's nothing here. Uh, I do have uh, in my type hierarchy uh, vehicle, bicycle and car and um, I've got that in my overview as well. But I can't really see all the attributes and the uh, methods of these uh, classes. So uh, what I'm going to do here is um, I just need to uh, select the vehicle class and drag it into my uh, workspace. And if I drag my car class right here, uh, you can see it automatically uh, creates the generalization association between them sorry generalization relation between them and I can drag drop the bicycle class and the same happens for that too so uh, that's one query that I wanted to clear and uh, there's another one about uh, dependency uh, when a class creates another class which one depends on which one so let's say I take this through an example let's say I have some uh, system here and it creates a class uh, receipt so this system right here creates the receipt so uh, who should be dependent on who uh, ideally I think it should be a bi-directional bi dependency but if it must be unidirectional it needs to be from the system to the receipt and um, this can be called a creates and this might be a little uh, non-intuitive because uh, one might think that the receipt uh, depends on the system uh, because if we change the system then the receipt changes but uh, that's not really the case because um, let's say we have a constructor in the receipt which um, which accepts uh, two values let's say uh, one of them is a sales tax and one of them is a value added tax and um, if uh, let's say the rules change and uh, we need to remove both of these and have just a GST. Uh, so what happens now is earlier we had a constructor in our receipt which was accepting uh, two values VAT and sales tax. Uh, now I remove that constructor and I add a new constructor which has uh, only GST. So in my system class wherever I had an instance of the receipt class uh, I'll have to change the way I'm creating the receipt. I'll have to uh, alter the number of parameters there. So, so in that sense, it's uh, the system class which depends on the receipt class. So um, these are the two queries that I wanted to uh, clarify. Um, all right, actually, I have another one. So uh, in case of um, aggregations, and compositions so let's say I create an aggregation from class 1 to class 2 um, there's uh, sometimes an arrow here or an arrow here at one end um, I've been asked what that arrow means so basically by default um, aggregations are bidirectional which is why we skip the arrows on both ends just as we do in bidirectional associations so um, if I select the aggregation I have here um, an option which says n1.navigable and by default it's ticked and so is n2.navigable so in case I don't want it to be navigable um, I can unselect this and now my n1 is not navigable so it's an arrow towards class 2 n2 um, so um, what navigable basically means is that uh, 
class 1 has an instance of class 2 in it and hence we can get from class 1 to whatever instance of class 2 that class 1 is related to that's what uh, navigable means so it's the same for compositions as well i can have a composition right here and i can select the composition and make n1 navigable as false and i get an arrow towards uh, n2 so that was the third uh, doubt that i wanted to answer um, i think that's it for this video and i'll see you later in the theory session then